Hello everyone, this is Amber with Story Chasing and today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I get my mail on the road. I'm gonna show you how you can get your mail on the road and make sure that you don't make the mistake that I did where I almost got my packages completely refused and sent back. When I first started looking at RVing, I was concerned about getting my mail on the road and what that all looked like. So as I started researching, I found like what other people were doing. And then over time, I just kind of adapted it to my kind of a style. So I'm gonna share that with you today on how I actually get my mail on the road, including Amazon packages or just, you know, your regular mail that comes to either your house, if you still have a house, or your mail forwarding service. So the first topic is the mail forwarding service. I find it to be the easiest thing actually. So I did have a sticks and bricks house, which I did sell. And then I went ahead and got a mail forwarding service in the town that I actually had my house in. So that mail forwarding service is something like a UPS store or a private mailbox company. You just get signed up with them and they give you an address. And then anytime you're on the road, you just call them up or you can email them and say, can you send me my mail to whatever location you're at? So it's pretty easy actually. And most mail forwarding companies will do that for you. They'll charge you a fee for it on top of your mailbox fee to go ahead and ship those items to wherever your location is. So you need to kind of talk to them about what those fees look like. The great thing for me, what I found is that I can just email them and give them the address to wherever I'm at. So it's pretty simple. And then I just have a credit card on file with them and they go ahead and charge my card for the amount that it costs to ship the package. Now, typically I send mine in just a priority mail envelope. It's a flat fee for whatever they can stuff in there. It's not usually too much because I get most of my bills in an email or I just go online and pay everything. So I don't get a ton of mail, but I still get mail and obviously I need to get it shipped to me. So that's what works for me. They just stuff it all in an envelope for me and then ship it out. So pretty easy, not a lot to it. That's one thing that I would say if you're going to RV and you're gonna RV full time, I would would definitely check into moving all of your bills and stuff to an online basis. Now, you might have already done that. We live in a digital age. Most of us are probably online a lot, paying our bills, but there are some people who still like to, you know, handwrite the check and get things through the mail. But I would encourage you to go ahead and get that switched over. It's gonna make your life a lot easier and you're not gonna have to pay so much for shipping costs and have your mail shipped to you that often. Now. I only get my mail sent to me like maybe once a month, sometimes twice a month, and um, I'm kind of bad about that, but I just don't get a lot in there. It's not typically a big deal to do that. Uh, however, one time I did get one document that I really needed, it was a jury summons, and yeah, I was late. <laughs> By the time I got the piece of mail, time had already passed, but I called the county and said, hey, like I, I missed it, I apologize, I'm on the road and they were all right with it. So anyways, probably should get my mail sent to me more often, and I am now, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. So right now, I actually have two mail forwarding services. I just signed up with the Escapees, or you've heard me talk about Escapers, is the RV club that I belong to, and they have a mail forwarding service. So I went ahead and did that, only because I'm transitioning my residency to either Texas or Florida this next year. I thought it was gonna be Florida, but it might be Texas because Texas just offered a nationwide health insurance plan. And that's not really for this video. We'll talk about that another time, but I wanted to go ahead and get the process rolling. So I set up a mail forwarding service with escapees which is down in Livingston, Texas. So how that works for me now is same process that I went through before with the mail forwarding service in the town that I was from. And you just go ahead and get that all set up. Same thing with the escapers mail forwarding service. And the thing is though with mail forwarding services, if you switch mail forwarding services, they do not actually put in a forwarding address for you and forward it to the new mail forwarding service. It's not like if you're at your sticks and bricks house and you move and you want to forward that mail to your new location, that doesn't work with these private mailbox companies like this. So you have to actually get them to forward the mail to your new address. So in this case, I still have both boxes open. I'm gonna keep the one box open that's in Washington for about three months 
see what all mail comes through there in the next three months and make sure I've kind of captured everything that should go to the new mail forwarding box down in Texas. The Escapers Mail Service is not the only mail forwarding service out there. There are a lot of other mail forwarding services. This just happens to be the one that I wanted to go with because I really like the Escapers RV Club. I'm really a part of it and I like all of their services and like what they stand for. So that's why I went with them. They also offer a scanning option, which I just signed up for. And you can go online and look at your mail. They actually scan the, the uh, like front of the envelope and they scan that to you and you can decide, do you wanna shred it? Do you want to have it sent to you in your regular mail envelope? They actually offer the option of opening up that envelope and scanning the contents for you. And then they'll put that online on your back office resource area so that you can actually look at the documents and then you don't have to have it mailed to you. So that's a huge benefit of some of these mail forwarding services. So I bet you're wondering, how do you find the address to have your mail forwarding company send packages or mail to you when you're in a specific location. So this is where it can get tricky and fun in trying to do your research. So uh, there's a typical places like a UPS store. So a UPS store will receive mail for you in a package. Now there's a little bit of a caveat to that that I just found out this year. They will receive UPS, they will receive FedEx, but Supposedly, they are not able to receive USPS packages. Now, I have shipped all over the US since I've been traveling and they have accepted those in the past. It may be a new rule that they can't receive those. So I'm pretty careful now because I had one UPS store almost refuse to accept the delivery of a USPS package for me and it would have been returned. So I'm kind of careful about that now. When I was in Colorado, I had some packages sent to me via USPS and I had it sent to a UPS store and I went in to see if the packages had been delivered and they promptly told me that they would not accept the packages because it was a USPS package. Well, that was the first time I'd ever heard of that and I, couldn't believe that they would actually refuse the packages. So I was gonna stake out the postman to grab him before he went in there to see if he would give me my package. But finally, I talked to the owner of the store and they said, okay, we're gonna do this for you know the one time, but make sure you don't do it again. And I was really grateful that they did that for me and I didn't have to actually stake out the postman and I probably would have scared him away and you know he wouldn't have given me my package. So, so if you don't wanna have to stake out the postman, make sure you don't send USPS packages to the UPS store, just in case that's the one store that won't actually receive the USPS packages. Now, there are private mailbox companies out there as well. So what I do to find private mailboxes is I just go on Google and I do a search for private mailboxes near me or mail centers near me, and that will pull up all these different places around me where I can have mail shipped to. So I just give them a quick call and say, hey, will you receive my package for me? And 100% of the time they've always said yes and they typically charge a fee. Even the UPS store charges a fee. UPS is I think $5 per package. Private mailbox companies, they typically are anywhere between two to $5 per package, but they'll let you know what the prices are when you call them. So your options are the UPS store, a private mailbox service, and the third option is actual just general delivery at a USPS location. Now, this is also where it gets a little tricky and a little bit frustrating. So USPS has an app and on that app, it actually has a filter for locations that accept general delivery. Not all post offices accept general delivery. I don't really know why, but they just don't. So. I made the mistake of sending some packages via USPS to general delivery. And again, they almost got refused, but they were kind enough to keep them for me. Uh, they had just happened to get there the same day I actually showed up too, so they kept them for me. You have to be careful with that. And the app, from what I understand from talking to them, the app is incorrect. Not all USPS stores accept general delivery. So if you call the local post office in your area where you're RVing and you just ask them, hey, what's the nearest place in town where I can get general delivery, they'll give you that address and then you just have everything shipped there. So just be careful whenever you're sending it via general delivery. Now the great option about general delivery is it's free where the other two options you have to pay for. And one of the great options is that the UPS store is pretty much in every single city except some of maybe your smaller rural towns. And then in that case, you just call a private mail center there and ask them if you can ship.
I almost forgot, the other place that you can actually get packages shipped to is an RV park if you're staying there. Now, I kind of forget about this option sometimes because I don't usually stay at RV parks, but when I have, I've always asked them, hey, will you receive a package for me? And most of the time it's just fine. So that's another option for you and it's typically free. Now, you know me, I don't usually stay in RV parks, but if I'm in a kind of a rural area, for instance, when I was in Moab last year, Moab, Utah, there was BLM land that I could have stayed at, but there was also an RV park. Well, I needed to wash clothes. I wanted to take a long shower. I wanted to get some packages. I wanted to dump my tanks and I wanted to fill up on fresh water. So it was worth it to me to go ahead and pay for the charge to stay at the RV park to get all of that done in one central location and receive those packages because if I had shipped them to the local mailing company there, it would have cost me anywhere between two to $5 a package. So I think I had like five or six packages shipped to me that particular month. So it was worth it to me to just pay the one fee at the RV park. So sometimes it's good to stay at RV parks for that reason. And another option for you to receive packages is friends and and family. If you have friends and family in the area, you can just ask them if you can send a package to them and they'll hold it for you typically, unless you have friends and family that are curious about your packages and want to open them up and maybe not give them to you. I don't know. It's Christmas, so <laughs> you might have some goodies coming that they want. So if you trust your friends and your family, you can send your packages to them too. <laughs> and hopefully, I'm assuming if they're really good friends and family, they're probably not gonna charge you. So we're gonna put this one at a $0 cost and a good option if you have somebody in town. All right, so the next item is Amazon packages. I use Amazon constantly. I'm a Prime member because it's just super convenient. And a lot of times I'm in and out of cities fairly quickly. So having the Amazon Prime with free two day shipping is absolutely worth it to me and something that I take advantage of all the time. A lot of times what happens is you want something on the road or just for instance, recently, I needed a part for my cassette toilet and I couldn't find it in town. So I went on Amazon, purchased it and had it shipped to the next town that I was going to be at so that I could pick it up and repair my cassette toilet. So the great thing about Amazon is you can ship to all the places that we just talked about, which is the UPS stores, the private mailbox services, the RV parks, but you have another option, which is Amazon lockers. Now, Amazon lockers are not in every city. Most urban areas that are highly populated, they have Amazon lockers. Now, your rural cities typically don't. So check to see if you have an Amazon locker in a city. Maybe you're just going through the city onto your next BLM location and you can stop and pick up your package at the Amazon locker. And they typically have Amazon lockers inside of malls. They have them at 7-Elevens or convenience stores. They're pretty plentiful. And now that Amazon has purchased Whole Foods, we're starting to see more Amazon lockers at Whole Food grocery stores. So that's another plus for you to pick up your packages and not have to pay anything extra to pick them up. Sending to an Amazon locker is also free. You can go and pick them up 24 seven. You just have to put in a code, except of course, if it's inside of say, um, the mall or someplace that's going to close at night. But if it's at a convenience store, usually the lockers are on the outside of the building and you just go in, put in your code and grab your package. Now, the only thing that you typically cannot send to the Amazon lockers is really large packages. They only have so much space and it'll tell you that when you're ordering on Amazon, if you, that package will actually fit into the Amazon locker. If it doesn't, it'll tell you to pick a new shipping location. So you see, getting your mail on the road is very easy. So in the next video over here, I've got more ideas on how to live in your van or in an RV that's going to help you in your research for getting on the road or just making your life a little bit easier if you're already on the road. All right, guys, see you in the next video.